Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Today on our menu is Prototyping 101, where we serve up the basics of prototyping so that you can share your ideas interactively. First off, we have three frames in our design panel with no connections. If we move up to the top right corner and press the Present button, we actually already have the most basic prototype set up. In the Present view, we have UI elements at the bottom center that enable us to move between frames, or we can use the left and right keys on a keyboard. To go back to the beginning of the prototype at any time, press R and it will restart. At the top of this view, we can click the comment icon to leave comments anywhere in the prototype. And on the right, we can adjust our view options to fit our prototype to our screen correctly. Now let's walk through how to create a prototype with interactions. Here we have our same frames inside our design panel. To build an interactive prototype, we need to select our prototype panel in the upper right. We can change device frames if we want, pick a background color, and name our flow, which we'll cover in just a minute. First, let's select frame one. On the right side of our selected frame, we can see a small plus icon with a circle around it. This is our new connection button. Click this and drag and drop it to frame two. You've created your first prototype. The details default to on click and navigate to. Our animation defaults to instant. We'll cover animation in another video. Click the present button to preview what we've made. If we click frame one, we are taken to frame two. What about all the other options? Let's do a little taste test. We already know on click. Let's try on drag. Let's view the prototype to see it in action. Clicking and dragging the mouse will now slide in frame two. Next is while hovering. Back in our prototype, hovering over frame one will slide in frame two because Figma remembers the last animation setting from the drag. Let's change that back to instant. We can also try while pressing, which will only advance while the mouse is pressing. Key and gamepad would let us program a key to advance to the next connection. Another option is mouse up or down, or mouse enter and leave, which give us interactions for both steps of a hover or click. Let's try one of them real quick. If I change this first connection to mouse enter and then connect frame two to frame three with mouse leave, then we can view our prototype and see that entering the frame advances to frame two and leaving frame two goes to frame three. Okay, so we're able to connect frames together now. That's almost the same as our first example, but with a little more control over interactions. When prototyping really comes into play is when we want to connect elements in a mockup, like this button, to other mockups, overlays, dialogues, or other things we might need to build up a workflow. Let's hook this up. In our prototype panel, select the Click Me button inside the first frame. Drag its new connection handle to the second frame. This will default to Navigate To. Now select the back button and make a new connection back to the first screen. Viewing our prototype, we can see that clicking the buttons accomplished the interactions we wanted. Next, we'll look at open overlay. We have a frame with an open button on it and another frame containing a simple dialogue with a close button in it. Make a new connection from the open button to our dialogue frame. This time, instead of leaving the interaction type to navigate to, we'll change it to open overlay. Once we've selected that, new menu options appear, giving us control of positioning, closing, and background overlay. Position will default to center, but it can be changed to any of these predefined choices or manually adjusted. Let's add a background overlay and go with the defaults everywhere else. Inside our dialog, we can make a connection from this close button to the small blue box with an X icon in it. This will close the overlay. If we go back into our prototype and click the open button, the overlay opens. Clicking the close button closes it. To make this more apparent, we can go change our animation to move in from the top. Now it slides in and out. Finally, let's take a look at swap overlay. Let's say we need to mock up multiple steps in a dialog or a feature carousel of some sort. We can actually connect one overlay to another by swapping them. Connect the next button to the second overlay and change the interaction type to swap overlay. This will simply swap our first overlay for the second one when we click. Now we can choose to go back by connecting to our back icon like before, or we can connect our close button to our initial frame. Since we're closing it, let's go back to the initial frame. Let's look at our prototype. Go to flow three that we just set up. Click open, our first dialog comes in. Click next, our second one comes in. And finally click close and it goes back to the first. These all moved in from the top because that was the last animation setting we chose. Along the way, we've actually created three separate flows. This is the last prototype feature we'll cover today. If we click this flow one tag, we can give it a name or click the edit icon to add a description. Let's change the name of the second flow to see what happens. In our presented prototype, we see that our description for our selected flow appears below the divider and our updated flow two title is reflected as well. That's how you make prototypes in Figma. I hope this Figma bite helps you prep perfect prototypes for people to play with. Thanks for watching.